Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel where we talk about skincare, grooming, and sometimes hair. So if that sounds like your thing, make sure you are subscribed. Also, come and follow me on Instagram where I post a lot of stuff you're not gonna see here on YouTube. Today, before we get into um, today's topic, I just wanna say um, thank you so much. I reached 300,000 subscribers, which is kind of crazy. I don't know if you checked out the community tab, but um, I posted saying that at 300,000, I will do a giveaway. I wanted to see what products you guys wanted in that. I didn't think I'd reach it so soon. So the video for the giveaway will be a while yet. I'm waiting for products to come over. A lot of you wanted K-Beauty, so I'm getting stuff from obviously Korea. Um, I'm trying to get some stuff from America. I'm gonna try and get some Crave in there for you. But yeah, do let me know what brands you want to see in the giveaway. Also, two more disclaimers. Um, I don't wear makeup. I had a lot of people ask me if I wear makeup on camera. I don't. I think if I wore makeup, I would be covering up these dark circles and this kind of like redness on my cheeks. Um, also, I don't use a filter on my videos. I barely know how to work Final Cut Pro, let alone add all these filters. I don't really know what that means, but I don't do that. Um, I use natural lighting and you'll see throughout my videos, the lighting changes quite a bit because I am literally sat in front of a window. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to clear that up. But today we're gonna be talking about clogged pores and congested skin. I'm an oily skinned person. Um, so I, I get this look and feel of cloggedness and congestion on my skin quite often. And skin can often look clogged and congested when we have excess oils on our skin, dead skin cells, blackheads, all making our pores appear bigger and appear congested appear being the key word here. But it's not just about the appearance as well, our skin can actually feel a lot rougher. Like if you run your hands over your skin, you'll feel a lot of texture. So I'll say appear being the key word because there is this idea that we can almost empty out our pores, clear them out and make our skin look kind of poreless and smaller. But weird way to start this video, you can't unclog your pores really. You can't unclog them in the sense that you, um, what's the word, empty out your pores of everything in there. You, just, you can't do that. And I think this idea idea comes from things like um, nose pore strips and blackhead extraction and we think we're doing it when we steam our face we think like our pores are opening and all that gunk's falling out when really what we're doing with that is just kind of scratching the surface of our pores and it's usually just like a mix of like excess sebum keratin so when it looks like we've emptied our pores or cleared them out with these products it's really just what's lying on the surface of our pores you're just seeing the top so that does make our pores look clearer but here's the thing we don't need to empty out our our pores. What this is going to be about is helping our pores and helping our skin function properly and function how it should do. And yeah, while those temporary fixes do look good, I think it's important to think more about the long run and concentrate more on the long run and maybe suffer a little bit with these enlarged pores for a little bit. And I do stress that here we are talking about the appearance of cleaner and unclogged pores, but I will be still be saying unclogging pores because I feel like it's, a, it's an umbrella term for generally making your pores function better, look better, and your skin look overall better as well. So first of all, let's talk about um, salicylic acid. I mentioned that blackheads, whiteheads, um, excess sebum, dead skin cells are all really the main things that make your pores look bigger and make your pores look clogged. And a salicylic acid, a BHA, is really gonna help with not only the appearance, but the texture of your skin as well. So BHA not only gets rid of dead skin cells, but it can work within the pore. So so it kind of like exfoliates deep down within as well, resulting in not only smaller looking pores, but also less bumps and less texture. And that's why I personally prefer an acid over a scrub because I feel like it can get deeper down instead of just working on the top layer of your skin. And for me personally, I do feel like they are a lot gentler on the skin as well. Okay, so let's talk about niacinamide, um, an ingredient you hear all the time on this channel. Niacinamide is known for being able to give your pores a tighter look. This is because niacinamide can actually help boost um, like the repairing of your skin, the, rep the natural repairing process of your skin, as well as helping to increase elasticity. So it really does give the appearance of tighter looking pores. So yeah, my personal favorite out of all this, I do feel for me, niacinamide is um, a, a, an ingredient I can use on a daily basis that really does help with this. And also let's talk about clay, whether it's kaolin or bentonite clay. Clay 
Mask is something I've always used for a temporary uh, appearance of smaller pores. I don't like removing oils from my skin at all, but clay masks are kind of like the only time where I will do this on purpose. However, a lot of good clay masks nowadays only remove the excess oils that gives you that kind of congested look on your skin. And I do find that when I'm looking greasy and oily, my pores look huge, they look massive. And I feel that any kind of clay mask gives you an instant appearance of smaller looking pores. Okay, so let's talk about particular products that you might want to focus on. We're not gonna be talking about brands names and all that stuff. Just the kind of product, maybe you're using the wrong type of product. So let's first talk about cleansers. I think an instant reaction to having clogged looking pores and oily congested looking skin is to scrub away everything and get rid of anything on your face. But the last thing we want to really be doing is drying out our skin and bothering our skin and harming our skin and scrubbing away at it. The most important thing we want is our skin to function properly and your skin will function properly on its own, but we can encourage it by being gentler with it. So using a gentle cleanser, I usually find that gel type cleansers are a lot gentler on the skin and they keep our skin's protective barrier intact and functioning normally. Um, I think especially as someone with oily skin, foaming, big foaming up cleansers I used to love because I used to love that dry feeling you get after, after you cleanse with that, but I hate that feeling now. One of my favorite cleansers that I'm using at the moment feels like you're not even washing your face. Like that's how gentle it is on your skin, but your skin feels so good after. The next one is an essence. Now it's not so much the essence as a product, but it's what's inside the essence, so the main ingredients. A traditional essence and the majority, is that a spot? No. A traditional essence and the main, um, what am I saying? <laughs> a very traditional essence usually has a very particular and common kind of ingredients in, and that is things like niacinamide, galactomyces, and general hydrating ingredients. So we said that niacinamide is great, but essences are usually deeply hydrating, and good hydrated skin, which is I think is one of the main focuses of skincare for me at the moment, keeping my skin hydrated, usually leads to plumper, firmer looking skin, which in turn I find helps helps to regulate things like um, oil production and your general skin functioning, which in turn <laughs> leads to um, your skin looking less clogged and congested because everything's functioning normally. And I personally find that when my skin is nice and hydrated, with that tighter looking skin, my pores look smaller and cleaner. I mentioned that one of the main things we want to concentrate on is just helping our pores function properly. And this is where retinols and retinoids can come in. I always have to say, um, this is a subject that I'm still not 100% uh, clear on, um, but what I do know is that they help massively with cell rejuvenation. But yes, it's supposed to be good. The next one is just an observation, but I find that gel moisturizers, especially as some with oily skin, um, really helps my pores look smaller. I find that if I do use like an oil-based moisturizer, if I use too much, even the tiniest bit, I can look quite congested in the face, um, being oily, as I keep saying gel moisturizers are the obvious option for me. I think when a lot of people think of gel moisturizers though, they think of like uh, moisturizers that sink instantly into the skin, which they do, but also ones that leave you kind of dry. But there are a lot of gel moisturizers that give you really deep hydration and leave your skin with a glow rather than kind of like um, an oily moisturized look to it. And I find that throughout the day, if I use a gel moisturizer, my skin just kind of behaves itself and I don't come home with like an oil slick face looking all big poured and congested. Personal observation though, and of course sunscreen. So we all know that sunscreen can dry out the skin and of course damage the skin as well. So your skin doesn't function how it should. And again, when we're talking about um, unclogging pores and skin looking less congested, we're all about making the skin, well helping the skin just functioning how it should do. So when you're drying out your skin um, and you're kind of damaging your skin, you're ultimately making your pores look bigger. They kind of, I said this before, but they kind of droop. And in turn, this is gonna make your pores look more clogged because they're more obvious. So let's talk about the actual routine. As I mentioned, this is a routine where I'm not gonna be doing any extractions because again, these are all temporary fixes that waste more time in the long run rather than reaching your goal of your skin looking less congested, looking less clogged. And they're all very counterproductive if we want our skin and pores to function how they should. So bearing in mind this routine is kind of me just talking about how I personally would interpret this into a routine. You don't have to do every step. You can pick a step that 
that works for you. Like usual, I just show you every step that you could do if you wanted to. And this is representative of an evening routine. In the morning, I just splash my face with water, toner, moisturizer, sunscreen. So let's start off with the cleanser. I mentioned earlier that the current cleanser I'm using feels like it's not even washing my face. It's super gentle. And this in particular one helps with um, balancing out your oils. So I take the tiniest amount, rub gently over my skin and rinse away. You'll see how gentle this is. And I think this product is a perfect example of your product doesn't have to foam for it to be working. Once a week on a night that I don't use a chemical exfoliator, I'll use a clay mask. For me, it's a little bit complicated when it comes to when I fit in the clay mask with a BHA. I'd rather just use it on a separate night. You don't have to apply this everywhere. And this is something I've stressed in a previous video, but if I put this on my cheeks, it will probably dry out my cheeks a lot. So I just want to apply it to the area that I feel looks and feels congested, which would be my oily T-zone. And I always take this off before it's fully dried. I've always just gonna dry me out and that's not what we want. So on a night that I'm not using clay mask, I will use my chemical exfoliator. I am of course using a BHA here. I put this on a cotton pad and very gently swipe across my face working from the inside out. Again, mainly concentrating on areas um, that look particularly porous and congested. I do actually use a toner often with my BHA, so I kind of let the BHA sit for a little bit, otherwise I find that my toner kind of foams up really weirdly. But I do use a toner as like a hydrating stage, and I'll pick one with hydrating ingredients in. And I do like to layer this up, because I do feel like my skin looks a lot more plump and firm. And this is where the essence comes in. And this is mainly where I get my niacinamide from, although I do sometimes use it in a serum stage. So yes, that serum stage, I will use niacinamide. And also on nights I'm not exfoliating, I'll use a retinol once a week at the moment to build up my tolerance. You can actually use a retinol and a BHA in the same routine. However, my skin isn't sensitive, but it doesn't like that combination. And my skin doesn't react very well to it. So retinol is once a week anyway for me at the moment. So I do just use them on separate nights. Again, concentrating on areas of fine lines and where I'm very porous. When it comes to a moisturizer, I mentioned that I do currently like using a gel moisturizer. This one in particular is nice and soothing on the skin. It also gives me enough hydration without leaving my oily skin looking oily and congested and oil slick. I do usually like to use a heavier moisturizer in the evening. I'm finding that this one gives me enough hydration both morning and night. And then of course, if this was the morning, I would be using a sunscreen. And that is it. That is very typical of a routine that I do just to keep my pores functioning how they should. As always, my videos are an open discussion, so please discuss in the comments down below. But that's it for me now, guys. I will see you next time.